Welcome to Trivia Viral. Our channel covers all the latest analysis and recaps on TV shows and movies as well as interesting stories and facts that you may not have known. So sit back, relax, and subscribe to our channel if you have been enjoying our videos so far. The opening scene reveals that a violent inmate is being treated in a correctional facility. She is known for being a kicker. And now while she is kept in lockdown, she reflects on past events. She is a nerdy, somewhat undesirable, ordinary type of student from a small town. She has been best friends with the prettiest, most popular cheerleader at school since she was young. Then one evening, the cheerleader invites the nerd to accompany her to the bar to watch a small indie rock band. As the cheerleader is fetching some drinks, the nerd overhears the soloist making fun of her promiscuous behavior despite noting that she's probably inexperienced. While the band was playing, a fire started in the bar. The two girls get to safety by jumping through the toilet window, barely escaping from being caught in the blaze. Outside, they come across the band, who made it all out just fine. The cheerleader is in shock, and the soloist offers to take them somewhere safe with their van. She agrees to this, in spite of the nerd's protests, and leaves with the band. Eventually, the nerd makes it home. She calls her boyfriend to tell him what happened. She says she is concerned that the cheerleader might be in danger. Then suddenly, the cheerleader appears in her home, with torn clothes and bruises all over. Things get even stranger when the geeky cheerleader watches her tear into a raw chicken that was in her fridge. She spews out a black and tar-like substance all over the floor. Then she throws the nerd against a wall and asks if she is afraid of her. She then bolts out the front door, leaving the nerd confused and scared. The next morning, the whole town mourns a tragic bar fire and the geek grieves her childhood friend. But the cheerleader comes to the school and acts as if nothing bad happened, completely nonchalant and uncaring of the tragedy. Later, the cheerleader meets up with the high school football captain who is still grieving his best friend who was caught in the fire. She flirts with him, then leads him to the nearby woods. Then, while the two of them are kissing, her mouth morphs into a monstrous gaping maw, and she attacks him. One day, a teacher at the school finds the remains of the captain. The town is further rocked by this event, the song that the indie band sung at the bar becomes a smashing success, and they say they donate 3% for the victims of the fire. One month passes and the cheerleader grows increasingly gaunt and pale, mentioning that she's getting hungry. She zeroes in on the school goth and arranges a date with him. The goth goes to meet the cheerleader, but he finds that she has directed him to a house in a deserted neighborhood that is still under construction. Suddenly, she transforms into a snake-eyed creature and feasts on him. When the nerd returns home, she finds the cheerleader on her bed. They become intimate until the nerd breaks out of her reverie and demands to know what's going on. Finally, the cheerleader spills on what happened to her when the bar burned down. In a flashback, the band pushes the cheerleader out into the forest, intending to give her as a sacrifice in exchange for chart success. While preparing the ritual, the band members wondered if the cheerleader really was a virgin. She repeatedly affirmed it, in the hopes that they would let her go. They recite some random incantation downloaded from the internet and then complete the ritual, leaving her to pass. The cheerleader found that she was still alive. We learn that when she is fully replenished with humans, she can be indestructible. She proves this by injuring herself, and we see her immediately healing. The nerd wants to tell the police, but the cheerleader says that no one will believe her. The cheerleader leaves by jumping out of the second floor window, landing completely uninjured on the ground. She disappears in the night. Being more worried than ever, the nerd does some research on the occult section of her school library. Soon she finds out what went wrong with the ritual. It had backfired because the cheerleader was the virgin. It certainly brought them prosperity, but it also turned the cheerleader into a succubus who needed young men to stay in good health. The nerd realizes that the spring formal is approaching and that the cheerleader might use the dance as a hunting ground. She tells her boyfriend about this and warns him that he should not attend the function, but he brushes it aside. She breaks up with him in order to protect him, and he decides to go in spite of her warning. Finally, it is time for the spring formal which is hosted by the members of the indie band, now more popular than ever. The nerd does not see her now ex-boyfriend anywhere, so she goes to chase after him. Meanwhile, the cheerleader approaches him in the woods. She tries to seduce him and leads him to an abandoned building with a pool. When he rejects her, she throws him into the gunky water. As the nerd rushes towards the mansion, she spots the raging cheerleader. Her injured boyfriend is in the pool and suffering a bite. She drags him out of the pool and confronts the cheerleader, saying that she was never a good friend to her. The cheerleader threatens to harm her, but the boyfriend uses the last of his energy to attack her. She then escapes through a nearby window. He passes in the nerd's arms. So, determined to get revenge, the nerd goes into the room of the cheerleader, initiating a brawl. Then she pulls the friendship locket from the cheerleader's neck and finishes her. When the cheerleader's mother hears the noise, she enters her bedroom and sees the aftermath of the fight. 
The nerd is taken to a correctional institution as a result. However, due to being bitten by the cheerleader during the fight, the nerd has developed some kind of demonic powers of her own. She also adopts some of her ex-best friend's personality, becoming ill-tempered and mean to the other residents at the institution. While being in lockdown, she levitates herself and knocks out an overhead window with her superhuman strength. She then escapes into the night. She flags down a passing vehicle and informs the driver that she's following a band. She grimly explains that tonight will be their last show. What are your thoughts about the story? Let us know in the comments section below. Subscribe if you would like to see more similar videos and give us a thumbs up to get more recommendations of our videos. Be the first to watch the latest videos by clicking the bell icon. See you on the next video.